It all started in 1900, when Max Planck, a German physicist, introduced a new theory about energy emission, the source in the form of heat and light. According to Planck's theory, such energy emission was quantized. In simple terms, the smallest particles would be found in whole numbers and not fractional. This is known as quantization. For example, the quantum of light is a single photon. It cannot be broken further into fractions. To put it another way, half a photon does not exist. Planck was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for introducing this theory. This theory became the foundation for the study of quantum physics. The study of quantum physics describes the behavior of the tiniest particles of substance at the smallest scales. In short, the study of any source at a subatomic level. In layman's terms, quantum field means the changes in position and energy of any source at the smallest level. According to David Lindley, the world of quantum works differently than the world around us, and we don't know the laws that govern them. Physicists are continually working day and night to uncover and understand these laws. In 1960, Richard Feynman, an American physicist, demonstrated some experiments to prove that quantum physics is not just fiction and that it exists. The only thing missing is a deep understanding of the laws of quantum physics. It's the principle that supports practically all modern technology, from the microchips in our mobile phones, LEDs, nuclear reactors, spaceships, laser scanners, etc. Having said that, quantum physics is not that easy. Generally, to define our location, you will just need our latitude, longitude, and height above the surface of the planet. But the same thing is that quantum physics is different. Let's say you wish to explain the place of a single tiny object, one electron. We will need an infinite number of integers distributed throughout all of space. Now that we know what the study of quantum physics is, Let's explore some of the mysterious and interesting theories of quantum physics. The amazing thing about these theories is that they're observable, but at the same time, they're unexplainable. We know what happens and how the energy levels change, but don't know why it happens. The laws of quantum physics are different from general physics. Therefore, subatomic particles follow a different pattern than physical objects that the human eye can see. These particles work in an odd and spooky way. These particles act in both ways. Sometimes follow the properties of the source and can be viewed as substance. Whereas on the other hand, sometimes they propagate as waves. The weirdest part about this is that even though they can be discovered anywhere, the probability of finding the exact location of any one of these particles is zero. In simple terms, physicists can just predict an assumption of their location and cannot define where they are. These infinite numbers are the probabilities of the object in space. Usually they flow like a wave. Therefore, this collection of infinite possibilities is called the wave function. The Schrodinger equation describes how wave functions move across space. Initially, the Schrodinger equation applies to wave functions just like Newton's law of motion. But there is something strange that happens in these waves. The spookiness of quantum physics starts to act. It might seem that the electron gets smeared out, but that is not the case. When you see the electron, you will only find it in one place. And when you finally locate the electron, something odd occurs. The electron's wave function ceases to follow the Schrodinger equation for a brief time and collapses. All the infinite numbers turn zero, except the original position of the electron where it was discovered. Now the question here arises that why does the electron's wave function stop obeying the Schrodinger law when nobody's looking? The physicists call this the measurement problem. Quantum theory is just a hypothesis. 
It provides physicists with the best guess about how the subatomic world operates. But this guess is also based on observations. For almost a century, scientists have been studying quantum theory. They use thought experiments to further explain it. Schrodinger described a thought experiment with a cat in 1935. He pictured a closed box with a cat inside at first. He assumed the box also had a gadget capable of releasing toxic gas. That gas would kill the cat if it was unleashed, and there was a 50% probability of the gadget to discharge the gas. We need to open the box to check the status of the cat. There are two possibilities. Either the cat is alive, or it is dead. Isn't it spooky? The result would be weirder if cats acted as a photon. As we know the particles can exist in both forms, a particle and a wave. In this thought experiment, the cat can be both alive and dead at the same time. This is referred to a superposition in quantum physics. Under this, until the box is opened, the cat can neither be considered dead or alive. The destiny of the cat is dependent on the observer to experiment. Based on their experiments, physicists believe that the Schrodinger equation does not apply to sufficiently large objects. Therefore, when the small quantum objects come in contact with these bigger objects, they stop following the Schrodinger equation. This is just the beginning. If quantum physics is valid at all scales, what is the genuine solution to the measurement problem? What exactly is happening in the quantum world? Things that happen while no one is looking are unobservable. Therefore, talking about those unobservable things is pointless. The Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics refers to this viewpoint. For most of the 20th century, the Copenhagen interpretation dominated the physics community because it permitted scientists to make precise calculations without having to worry about the quantum theory's problematic concerns. However, this support for the Copenhagen interpretation has dwindled during the past few decades. According to studies conducted over the last few decades, it is concluded that quantum physics applies to all things and even at larger scales. Moreover, quantum physics is used in physical cosmology to describe the largest thing, our universe. Moving ahead, the multiverse interpretation of quantum physics argues that the Schrodinger equation always applies and wave functions never collapse. Based on this interpretation, the universe divides indefinitely at the happening of every event somewhere in the other simultaneous universes. Another possibility is the pilot wave theory, which argues that quantum objects are directed in their movements by waves, and that the particles can affect distant waves at speeds even faster than light. The multiverse and pilot wave theories present two very distinct views of reality. Although both are entirely consistent with quantum mechanics calculations, Alternative theories that change quantum physics equations include spontaneous collapse theories, which propose that the collapse of the wave is not a measurement problem, but a natural event that occurs at random. The world of quantum physics is never-ending. One theory leads to another, and then again leads to a new dimension. It is not that something new comes up, just that the physicists are slowly and gradually discovering the new dimensions. Therefore, we know that quantum theory is applicable, but yet physicists have not been able to know the foundations of this theory. In short, they haven't discovered the fundamental laws that govern the quantum world. However, several intriguing hypotheses have been offered to tackle these issues. These theories might also pave the way for solutions to other physics difficulties, like quantum gravity and the theory of everything, which has been worked on by scientists since Albert Einstein. Once physicists resolve the foundation of quantum physics, it will enhance and change the world around us, especially the IT sector. 
Quantum computers would get their exceptional abilities by utilizing unusual small world laws like quantization. This quantization of energy in electronics and other particles may be highly beneficial for encoding data in the digit binary system used by computers. The superposition might be extremely beneficial in the field of information technology. The ion will be able to operate as zero and one at the same time under quantum superpositions in both directions. As a result, the qubits will be able to handle huge data sets much faster than regular bits. Similarly, the entanglement will also be extremely useful in the IT field. As we know that if we measure the value of one qubit, then it can determine the value of another qubit entangled into it. This will allow the system to simultaneously perform more computations. The new world of quantum computers. These computers will do more complex and huge calculations in fractions of seconds. Currently, scientists have not been successful to make such computers because the entangled qubits don't live long due to decoherence. Scientists are doing multiple types of research to create enough entangled qubits that are long-lived and capable of handling complex calculations. To sum up, quantum theory is similar to following a recipe. We can make a meal if we have the ingredients and follow the instructions. Developing futuristic technology without applying quantum theory simply means following a recipe without knowing what will happen to the ingredients during the process. No doubt we will get a tasty meal, but we won't be able to explain what happened to all of the ingredients that made the meal taste so good. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it with your friends who would love to know about the quantum world. Hit the subscribe button for your weekly dose of informative fun and ring the bell icon to never miss a video from us.